podcast is powered by MonkeyKnifeFight.com. Woo! We ain't clowning around on this one. Eureka! Hey! We make plays every day. Hey, Jay! We make plays every day. 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 We gon' get it. We make plays every day. Hey, Jay! Welcome, welcome to the Real Fantasy Playmakers. I am your host, Bogard Scott Free. And today we got two of the on the rise, up and coming content creators, you know what I'm saying? Sports journalists, sports casters, all that rolled into one. And with no further delay, I'm going to go ahead and introduce host. Of the Clown Town Sports Podcast. It's Joe and Andrew. What's happening? What's going on? It's great to be on today. Uh, you know, you can find us on Spotify, on Instagram, all that, Apple Podcast, Anchor at Clown Town Talk Show. I'm really excited to talk to sports and uh, let's get into it. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me rephrase that. Host of the Clown Town Sports Talk Show. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So now, we're, today on today's show, we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna talk about some impactful rookies. We're gonna talk about some some bounce back candidates. We're gonna talk about some free agency acquisitions that could be impactful as well. And then we're gonna go ahead and close the show up with some uh some little division predictions. You know what I'm saying? But before we yeah. get to all that, we're gonna go ahead and handle some quick housekeeping. Go ahead and follow us at the GMM Network on both Twitter and IG. Follow me also on IG at Bogard Scott Free World. We also want to shout out the Rum Boys Fantasy Network. I am a proud member of the Rum Boys uh, ca- uh, staff and cast, crew, gang, all that shit. Shout out to the gang. Make sure you subscribe to the uh, YouTube slash the Rum Boys Fantasy Network. Also, be sure to subscribe, obviously, to the GMM Network on YouTube. We want to shout out our sponsor, Milk and Honey TX, for all your CBD wellness and all your CBD goodness. Visit MilkandHoneyTX.com. And just like you guys heard in the in the intro of this podcast, this podcast is powered by MonkeyKnifeFight.com. Go ahead, head on over to MonkeyKnifeFight.com, use promo code GMM, and we'll match your first deposit all the way up to $50. Bro, we got... Baseball in full effect. Actually, as we speak, we 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 got um we got uh, b- basketball around the corner. We got football on the way. I mean, you guys are gonna want to get in on this daily sp- fantasy sports prop action. Go ahead, head on over to monkeynightfight.com. Use promo code GMM and we'll match your first deposit all the way up to fifty dollars. Hey, yo, Joe and Andrew, go ahead. I know you had mentioned just a little bit earlier, but go ahead and let them know one more time where they can find you, all the social medias, etc., and uh, where they can find your podcast. Yeah, uh, find us on Instagram at Clowntown Dog Talk Show. You can find us on Spotify at Clowntown Sports, and as well as Anchor, Apple Podcasts, and much more, as well as Bullhorn and stuff like that. And uh, yeah, we're really excited to be on today. I'm hyped, talk some fantasy. Yeah. Okay. So now. Before we, you know, the, obviously uh, it's your guys' first time on the show, so you know I just I want to get my audience a little a little familiar with you guys. You know what I mean? So uh, you know, go ahead and let them uh, know a little bit about yourself, where you guys are from, and uh, just basically how you embarked on this uh, content creating uh, journey. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're actually from a little town called Halston, Mass, right outside of Boston. Uh, you know, during quarantine, we were kind of bored, and my buddy texted me, he goes, hey, you know, you should start a uh, podcast. And I'm like, holy shit, like, that's, you know, let's do it. Like, all we do is talk sports. All we do is talk sports. So, you know, we got into it, and I think we recorded, like, 35, 40 episodes within, like, two months of just sports talk. And then we had to transfer, you know, we had to do something different because there's no sports on, right? So we started interviewing athletes, and... uh you know, it's taking off from there and just working every day on it. It's a lot of fun. You know, it's more of a passion than a job. And uh, it's been great. That's awesome, man. And so you guys are, uh, you, are you guys uh, like, you know, do you guys go back? Like, you guys like childhood homies? Like, what? how did you yeah. guys come about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
me and Andrew are really good friends from high school, and then uh, my other co-host as well, we're all friends from high school. Yeah. That's awesome, man. Um, yeah, and shout what, what's your other co-host names? I want to shout them out. Josh and Devin. Yeah, Josh and Devin, man. Big up to Josh and Devin. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that's right, because I, I do follow you, I do follow you guys' content. And uh, yeah, that's right. There, there is, there is a, there is four of y'all. That's what's up, man. And yeah, I, I, yeah, I love the 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 dynamic that you guys got going, man. You guys do cover everything besides, you know, uh, uh just football. And um, I, you know, I'm I'm predominantly football, me personally. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. uh, yeah, man. You know, I, you know, because of our sponsor, we've been, you know, we've been expanding. And uh, yeah, you know, I, I actually I have a co-host, uh, and he's actually. He's the guy for everything, you know what I mean? Not just football. Oh, yeah. So he kind of yeah. is my my plug and play kind of guy when it comes to everything else. But football is my wheelhouse, and that's what we're here to talk about today. You know, from a fantasy and reality perspective. So we're gonna go ahead kick this thing off, and uh, we're gonna start with, you know, what I'm saying some bounce back candidates. You know, what I mean, we're, we're gonna go ahead and touch on some players from each division. I mean, not each division, each position. You know what I mean? Just give me one from each position. Uh, uh, you know who you think is a uh, you know a bounce back candidate, and we'll, we'll, and this could be a reality or a fantasy take. You know what I mean? Because you know so there is they do tend to be different. You know what I mean? Mm. Yeah, but so let, let's go ahead. Let, let's start it off with receiver. Oh, receiver. <laughs> receiver. So uh, for me personally, I think this is going to be a bounce back year for Mike Evans. Oh, okay. I think he's. I think that he's been struggling in fantasy. Um, I think he's just gotten old, and, and honestly, I think with the addition of Tom Brady, I think he's going to do much better. He, you know, he was definitely not their top receiver last year, and he was barely a wide receiver too, right? He yeah. would struggle last year, struggle. So I think with this Tom, you know, Tom Brady addition, obviously, I think their offense will uh, be much better, and I think that he's going to be, a, you know, back to wide receiver one and be able to be a reliable fantasy player. I, I will say this. With, with Mike in Mike Evans' history, this is definitely the best quarterback that's throwing him the ball. But exactly, he, but that's he also point. had he also had a ton of volume. You know what I mean? Like he oh and and, and his catch percentage was fairly low. Like he kind of needed those those ton of uh, uh, targets. You know what I mean? And he did average a thousand yards. You know every year in his career, which is which is pretty good. But I mean, I will say, you know what I mean. Uh, with someone like Tom Brady, who's not going to throw anywhere near thirty picks, like maybe like maybe ten, nine or ten picks, yeah. you know, what I mean, the the necessity of, you know, being able to uh, play from behind, I don't really see, you know, the necessity of throwing the ball as much if you're going to be able to sustain drives. So I, yeah. I mean, I, I tend to, I, I see what you're where you're going with it, but I, I, you know, I kind of I'm on the other side where I feel like, you know, bringing in Gronk, you know, uh, who is a red zone target and like. You know, um, you know, obviously Chris Godwin out of the slot ma- mainly. You know, what I'm saying like where where Tom Tom Brady tends to favor. I mean, I, I think we might see you know the same type of Mike Evans outing because a thousand yards is his floor, and like, but I but I won't argue that he does have all the upside with, you know, he does have a high ceiling with Tom Brady there. He does, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I also think that I don't know if he's gonna have like. A bounce back year. I think he might do what he's been always been doing. I just like you were saying. I think I think you just have too many pieces over there for him to get the like most amount of like opportunities as everyone else. Yeah, because Mike Evans was a he was a huge red zone target, but you know bringing in someone like Gronk who already has that rapport with Brady. You know, what I mean, I think Gronk is actually going to piss a lot of owners off when it, you know a Godwin owners or Mike Evans owners because he's going to you know he he might look yeah. to Gronk a lot in that red zone, but. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, and, and I will say, you know what I mean. Uh, Mike Evans, though, he is, man, he he is a phenomenal talent. You know what I mean. So I, yes. with someone like, and, and maybe his poor catch radius, his poor catch percentage, could have been because he had someone like Jameis throwing him the ball. So, yeah. you know what I mean. So I, you know what, we're gonna go ahead and snap that he bounce back candidate. We're, we're putting him in the category. Let's go. <laughs> Great. What you uh, what you got, Andrew? Yeah. Um. I don't know. I think I kind of got Brandon Cooks here. Ooh. I think Brandon have a great season over in Houston. I think he's a perfect type of guy that can fill that spot for like Hopkins. Hopkins. Yeah, and Deshaun Watson throwing in the ball. I think that's like the perfect, like the guy he wants, like be able to go down the field, get these types of throws, like kind of like a uh, like a Will Fuller, but more like versatile and stuff like that. 
And you know what? I think a lot of people are spooked off of Brandon Cook's thing, you know, about the concussion stuff. And, like, he's only had three concussions in his career. So it's kind yeah. of – but, you know, one of them came in the Super Bowl when he was with the Patriots. So stuff like that happens. It's kind of polarizing the people's minds. You know what I mean? They yeah. they tend to not forget that. And then, like, own, you know, he always carried a high draft capital in fantasy. So a lot of owners will be kind of pissed. You know what I mean? They're, they're, they're PO'd, like – because they yeah. spent the third round draft capital on a guy who was never seen the field, and then, and then you couple that with the fact that, you know, may, maybe they knew the Rams knew something too. Like, hey man, let's, you know, we're gonna move on from him, so let's just let's just shut him down for the year because that's kind of what they did last season. Yeah, and he has Jared Goff throwing to yeah, him back. Good point. So now uh, like, Watson is a huge, huge. Oh play my god! Advantage. I don't know if you want, you know, listeners. I don't know if you listen to our podcast. But I am a huge Jared Goff hater. I think he's the most <laughs> overrated QB in the NFL. Yeah, I mean, I think he should have stuck to acting. You know what I'm saying? Because, well, uh, you know, <laughs> yeah. he's, he's low-key Brian Phillippe. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> Or not Brian Phillippe. Uh, who, oh, I can't remember the actor he looks like. Uh, Ryan. Uh, is it Ryan Phillippe? Is it Ryan? Uh, Ryan, Ryan Goslin. Go- Ryan Goslin. There you go. He <laughs> looks just like Ryan Goslin, dude. I swear. <laughs> he does. He's just a uh, <laughs> Terrible. Okay, so let's let's go ahead. Oh, I got one. I'll, so I'll throw out Devontae Adams. I mean, I know it's kind of a okay, all right, yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. kind of a cheat code because he did he did get hurt, but uh, I mean, it still counts for the category, right? You know what I mean? Because I definitely yeah. I'm looking at my list. I definitely had Brandon Cooks at the top of my list, so that's why I I was totally on board with that. No. But uh, Devontae Adams, yeah, man. I mean, yeah. that Green Bay defense is not good at all. You know what I mean? And like you. Not, yeah. Not. Yeah, and and you know whether it, it, all the way back from their their front seven to their secondary, like they can't stop the pass, definitely can't stop the run, and if if they're not owning time of possession with their run game on offense, they're going to be throwing the ball more than we were used to. And last year, if you look at their schedule, they had one of the weakest schedules. That's why they were able to pull out thirteen and three. I you know they're going to have a tougher schedule this year. You know what I mean I can see Aaron Rodgers yeah. doing more Aaron Rodgers things, and I mean I'm not disrespecting Devin Funches or Alan Lazard, but yo, they, the, they're they non-existent to me. You know what I mean? Like, it's all yeah. Devontae Adams' show. You yeah, I mean? plus, I, with them drafting Jordan Love, I think Aaron Rodgers just needs to go all out this season. I think he's kind of pissed off that they wanted to move on from him. Good point. And be throwing the ball a ton to Devontae Adams and getting so, like, just, he's going to be racking up yards every game and touchdowns. Yeah. And another honorable mention I mean, this one's kind of a little... I didn't have him at the top of my list because of uh, Big Ben's Tommy John, but I'm going with Juju also because... Uh, I was going to say Juju. Yeah, because yeah, okay. they did They did put... They did come out... Mike Tomlin, he's the type of coach. He, he says what they're going to do. And he came out and he was like, yep, we're going to go ahead and we're putting Juju back in the slot. And that's where he shines. You know what I mean? Like, you got Claypool and you got, you know, uh, Deontay yeah. Johnson on the outsides. And you also got James Washington that can rotate on the outside, and Juju could probably be, a, you know, predominantly a slot guy. And that's the last yeah. time we've seen him. That's you know, eat a lot was out of the slot. And I mean, we've seen it last season when they tried to put him out wide as a number one, and he drawed number one coverage. He's not that great, you know what I mean? So yeah, yeah, Plus, yeah. And and with Ross Roethlisberger back, that's a huge like. Oh, yeah, they had no one. He had yeah. no one to throw to him. Like Rudolph's a clown bag. Like. Uh, that was a disaster. Like, they had literally, he had no one to throw to him. Everyone was, like, counting him out. But I think they're going to have a great year this year overall. I think the Steelers are going to be a wild card team. And I think Juju's going to have a great, you know, part of that. Yeah, and if you think about last season with the, uh, you know, if, if they had the addition of the seventh seed, they would have been that seventh seed. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so let's let's go ahead and go on on the running backs. You know what I mean? Go, go ahead, set this one off, Joe. Uh, for running backs, for me, this is a tough one. I'm gonna go with my boy Camara. Ooh, that's I'm a good go one. My boy Camara. Uh, that's I'm a, a big good Saints one. fan. I don't know if you know, I'm a big Saints fan. Uh, a little biased, but I also think that this is his time to shine. Uh, I, I know he's still, you know, capable of being this top ten running back. Everyone counts him out because of how bad of a year he had. He was hurt. People don't realize that he was hurt. He was yeah. playing on a hurt leg. Oh, yeah. uh, he was definitely not himself. You know, I was watching him, and he was definitely not himself. And the only explanation to that is he's hurt. He's gonna. He's he's already came out and said that he wants uh, McCaffrey money, right? Yeah. Everyone knows that he came out and said he wants McCaffrey money, so he's gonna have to go off this year in order for the Saints to be able to pay him because the Saints have so many people to pay this coming year. Yeah. They and do. if Kamara is the same guy that he was last year, I say don't pay him. 
you know? Yeah. So he's got to have a great year, and in order to do that, he's going to put up some insane numbers, is my opinion. Yeah, and, and one one thing I'll add before we go on to Andrew, um, the one thing I'll add about Kamara is, you know what I mean? Like, he, he literally catches at least 70 balls a year. So, I mean, he, he goes over, he catches 30 more balls, you know what I mean? He's in Kamara territory now, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And, like, I mean, yeah, like, I'm not afraid of Latavius Murray, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, especially when it comes down into the red zone, that you know, it's not like we've seen him get snaked, you know, some goal line carries from from Murray at all. The one person I think is the snakiest of them all that, that kills a lot of us and frustrates us in fantasy is the goddamn Taysom Hill. Like, that's the one guy <laughs> that might fuck around and steal a goal line carrier too, you know what I mean? But other than that, it's Kamara's show over there. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Yeah. What's, what's good, Andrew? Who, who you got? Yeah. I like I like Melvin Gordon this year on the oh, Broncos. That's a oh, good one. That's yeah. I think the Broncos are just gonna have a great season. Like every like everything they needed last season, they brought in and they filled those spots. I, yeah, with with Drew Locke there now, just fully like committed to being that like their starter. I think yeah. he's gonna. Yeah, yeah. And they got a, they got a ton of weapons that can t- you know may, you know keep you know six man boxes. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not. It's gonna be hard yeah. to stack the box when you already had Cortland Sutton, who 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 uh, basically broke out. You know, you brought in Jerry Judy, arguably the greatest route runner coming out of this class. You, you know, you Noah Fant too. Yeah, you got Noah yeah. Fant, and you even got Albert O, who they drafted, who had rapport with uh, Drew Locke. And if you think about it, it, it is Pat Shermer there. They're gonna run a lot of t- uh, twelve personnel. So there, it's gonna be emphasis. It's gonna be they're gonna put an emphasis on the run game. You know, anywhere yeah. Pat Shermer, even if you look at more recent history with Pat Shermer, with um, New York, you know, in his last couple of years in New York with Saquon Barkley. And I'm not saying Gordon is Saquon Barkley, but I'm just saying the type of workload that they're going to yeah. enforce. And, and I'm not scared of Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay's meh to me. You know what I mean? He's yeah. not. Yeah. Melvin Gordon is, is like, I used to call Melvin Gordon uh, diet Todd Gurley. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because mm. because he could catch the ball, he could run between the tackles, he could, you know run around the yeah. run around the edge. He, Melvin Gordon is just complete. He just had that. He just has a little bit of an injury history, but other than that, man. Plus, if we're playing scared like that, you know what I mean? We, we, you don't win playing yeah. scared in fantasy. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah. I like yeah. that Melvin Gordon take. You know, well, yeah. I actually kind of mentioned mine, and uh, you know what's funny? Me and Andrew were kind of on the same page here because I had Melvin Gordon on the top of my list right here, but I'm gonna go with. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna go with the cop out again, and I'm gonna say Saquon Barkley because, yeah, yeah, he was hurt. So yeah, because he was hurt. I mean, that's kind of like my my Devonte Adams kind of uh, take, but 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 yeah, also you got someone like uh, Jason Garrett with his clapping ass coming over there, just <laughs> yeah, just a clapping on the sideline. But you know, I mean, Jason Garrett's not far removed from from two having two years in a row consecutively with the leading rusher and with uh, Demarco Murray and then and then Zeke and then Zeke's always been consistent, and now you have someone like. Barkley, who's you know, arguably you know, a, you know the best running back in the game. You know what I'm saying? Like you know, talent yep. wise and physically. And but I will say it is that line that worries me a little more. But I mean, we've seen him do it behind that line for the last couple of years. So you know what I mean? Yep. Give me Saquon Barkley. Okay, here's a little tougher one. Yeah. Here's a little tougher one. The tight end position. This one's a little tough because I was kind of, I was kind of, I was kind of torn on on you know on this one, but. Who do you think could bounce back this year at the tight end position? Uh, I'm going to go again. I know <laughs> this might be a little biased again, but I'm going to go with my boy Jared Cook. Okay. I, th- I think he's an animal. I honestly think like he just didn't have the receptions that he could have last year. Michael Thomas just ate everything up. I think that he's going to be a huge red zone threat. Drew Brees loves his tight ends. It was his first year in the Saints offense. The Saints offense is a really, really complex like offense, like Sean Payton's a really complex guy. Like you know, we've actually talked to some some um, athletes that were on the Saints on in the Saints uh, training camp offensively, and you know, you go in, you have to. Like, he's very different from all the other offenses where there's a lot of run throughs and there's a lot of time to learn offense. No, no, you go into the Saints, you have to know and run and be able to run day one every play. So oh, yeah. I think. Sean Payne that, don't play. Sean Payne don't yeah, play. Yeah, yeah. No, he doesn't. So, Just a chew in know, his gum. You know what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, so tough luck if you, if you can't, right? So I think that one transition year for Jared Cook, I think this year is going to be a huge target for Drew Brees, especially red zone. 
And because he's such a heavily throwing guy, look out for him. Are, are you worried about back Emmanuel back Sanders coming in there, like you know, could possibly stealing a lot, uh, you know some of those uh, those slot snaps? You know I mean? A little bit, but, but you know what? Here's the thing, though. Who is going to cover Jared Cook? You got two guys on Mike Thomas. You got the second, you know, tier cornerback on Emmanuel Sanders. You got somebody. You got the linebacker Garden Camara. Who's taking Cook? Yeah, and he's still got tra- and you got your 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 burner Traquan on the outside where you might need a yes Traquan yeah. yes and uh, yeah who's who's guard and Devonte Harris Deontay Harris everyone counts out him out he, these are uh, he's an animal and then Taysom Hill when he's out there who's covering Cook nobody yeah the, you know what this is val- this this is accurate you're right because I do remember a lot of wide open la- uh, wide open middle of the field for Jared Cook and he just he just kind of yeah. goes unnoticed yeah I, I'm not nobody's mad at that. Got- yeah, yeah, I got yeah. For my bounce bag, I'm going with Eric Ebron Ooh. on the Steelers this year. I think he's gonna get so many red zone touches because he's been doing that throughout his entire career. And now on the Steelers, I think he's like that one guy the Steelers have that can get all those red zone touches, like be able to get open and sp- like in just tight spaces and just get all those red zone touchdowns and all like stuff like that. Good old frying pan hands, Eric Ebron. That's what I call him. Cause he like claps his hands with them big old frying pan size hands. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's great. Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. All right. Here we go. So here's one for me. This one was really tough. You know what I mean? And like, I I I I wanted to look at, you know, what I'm saying, uh, different. I, I was looking at all the different tight ends that I, you know, what I'm saying. But then I I figured I was like, you know what? I might go young here, because. TJ Hawkinson, he had a ton of opportunities in the beginning of the year. And then, yeah, he did get hurt. But when he came back, they, they were kind of like, they kind of put him in a doghouse. And like, yeah. and, and and also too, because when he did come back, there was no more Marvin Jones. It was, you know, there was no more uh-huh. Stafford. You know what I mean? It was just really tough for him. You know what I mean? So, yeah. and, uh, you know, in, in the Derek Bevel system, I can remember, you know, a couple years ago when Derek Bevel was with Seattle. Yeah, J- Jimmy Graham, had, you know, was was a red zone uh, target. He was he was one of the yeah. top reads. So I think you know, and you know, yes, you know, we don't always see tight ends flourish early in their career, but I mean, every so often it does happen, like George Kittle, or like a, um, or even we seen Noah Fant last season. He flashed a ton. Like it's not yeah. it's not far fetched that uh, T.J. Hawkinson can have like a bounce back season because I think yeah. they were trying to heavily involve him early on. Last yeah, year. definitely. Yeah, I really I like that pick. I I think the Lions are gonna be a, like they're gonna a, be great in fantasy. I think there's threat this year with Matthew Stafford back, and I think they're they drafted like everything they needed this year. Like they drafted that running back was it Swift? I think. Yep, DeAndre got, Swift. Yep. The running back, you got Kenny Galladay, who's like a top five wide receiver now. Yeah, he, Kenny G is legit. Like he's yeah, he baby Tron. Season. Yeah, baby Tron, man. That that yeah. that, that kid is nice. And he was yeah. able to do it with whoever was throwing him the ball. You know what I mean? Yeah. He went through David Blau. He went through yeah. uh, uh, Jeff Driscoll. Like you know what I mean? Like he had the shittiest quarterbacks throwing him the ball, and it didn't matter. He still produced. And like, and with that said too, with Marvin Jones coming back on one side, Kenny G on the other. You know what I mean? Yeah. The, the, you know those wide those those, those uh, lanes in the middle of the field. You know what I'm saying? Those, those under routes. You know what I'm saying? That that's gonna be all TJ Hawkinson. And, and if you think about it, TJ Hawkinson, he might have had a bit of a, the case of uh, the drops too. He would have had like five touchdowns, but he dropped a ton of them in the red zone last yeah. year. So if he can, you know, if he can fix that, you know what I mean? He yeah, might, he might be a steal in the draft this year, and, and maybe uh, maybe you know he could be a bounce back candidate. But yeah, I like that. Yeah, and like I, I'm a I'm a big David Blau fan. I think I think I love David Blau <laughs> and Jeff Driscoll. Probably- I, I, mean, I, I, I'm a daily fantasy sports guy. Also, like I, you know, yeah. I love I love playing DFS and like I would st- I used to start the shit out of them because they would be, oh yeah they would be cheap and like you know they would be low percentage owned where it's like if you hit with those guys you could really hit you know what I mean yeah 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 oh yeah, yeah. I, him getting that like time with Hawkins in last season and just being able to just 
for the next couple of seasons, like, stay behind Stafford, because I don't really know how much longer he's going to be, like, stay in the league. He might retire soon. I think he's had a lot of injuries lately. Yeah. And if you keep out there, learning under him and able to come in soon, already having some experience in the league, I think they're going to be a good duo. Yeah. And I like to pronounce his name David Blow. Yeah, you know I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? You're going to learn something about Bogart. I, I, you know, I like a... As much as I like to think I know what I'm saying, I love saying ignorant shit. That's fun, just funny to me. But yeah, I love. I shout out to David Blow. But yeah, okay, well, speaking of quarterbacks, let's, let, we'll close this segment up. Uh, you know, some bounce back quarterback candidates. All right, uh, this is a tough one for me. Uh, I thought a little harder with this one. Um, you know, he wasn't a great fantasy guy last year. I'm going to go Aaron Rodgers. Ooh, I think, yeah. I think, I think Aaron Rodgers fell off comp- like so much last year. I think that he's going to have to really prove his team wrong because they, dra- you know, they drafted Love. So it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what he, you know, he can do with Devontae Adams. And, and uh, I, I, re- I really like him this year as, as a bounce-back candidate. I like that, man, because, I mean, also, too, what I was mentioning earlier about like their defense – Really didn't get no improvements in in the, in free agency or the draft, so it's like you know what I mean. And, you know, and uh, you know, in the second year under Matt Lafleur, I would assume defensive coordinators are gonna be able to game for that 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 zone run attack. And if like if you take that away, Aaron Rodgers is like he's gonna be like hold my beer. You know what I mean? Like let me yeah exactly. Let me start doing Aaron Rodgers things again. You know what I mean? Because man, I love Aaron Rodgers and like and like and you did point out earlier too, Joe. Um, you know, I mean, he's he's gonna want to he's gonna want to show show off his his uh, you know, and remind the world that hey, yo, I'm a, I'm a Rod, motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like because he, exactly, yeah, because you know he's he's probably gonna be moving on. You know what I mean? And there's gonna be some teams, some notable teams that are gonna need a quarterback. You know what I mean? Like so, he's gonna he's, he's gonna, gonna want to shine that resume up. Exactly. Yeah, I I like I like Matt Ryan this year. Oh yeah. I, I think yeah, I think Matt Ryan's gonna have a big bounce back year in that very tough division this hey, year. Hey, you I did think. it again, Andrew. He was at the top of my list. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> yes. Um, go ahead, go ahead. Continue, continue. Yeah, like with Todd Gurley coming in, Calvin Ridley, like in another year, another year under his belt, he's just gonna keep getting better and better. And just Julio Jones just does does remarkable things every single year. You like you know what you're gonna get out of him. The team's just gonna be so good. And Todd Gurley coming in, it's gonna help him out a lot. And you know, I I actually forgot to mention my bounce back running back. It, no, no, no. Actually, no, I did. Did I? Damn, I can't remember. What, either way, it was it was gonna be Todd Gurley, because uh, even but see, I I didn't really, I didn't really want to mention him per se because he still finished within the top twelve. You know what I mean? So yeah, you know, yeah. In, in a bad year, but yeah, but just like you mentioned, with all those those weapons for Matt Ryan, including Todd Gurley, and like. And and the best intangible in the game yep. is Matt Ryan in his second year, an even year, and in second year in a, in, a, in a system. You know what I mean? Granted, he's been with Dirt Cutter before years ago, but still, it is the second year of Dirt Cutter back with Matt Ryan. And for some yeah. odd reason, in an even year, which this is 2020, it's an even year. Yeah, he sent you know what I mean. And the second year in a, in a system, yeah. he goes bananas, bro. It's kind of it's crazy. It it's crazy. fucking yeah. uncanny. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got one. This one's kind of an ugly one, but it's the first time this guy is going to have a solid offensive line, and I'm going with my man, Phillip Rivers. You know what I mean? Oh, I like, that's a good pick. I like yeah, that pick. Because Phillip oh. Rivers, bro, he just, they never did. They, yeah, they gave him a great defense, but they never gave him a great offensive line. You know yep. what I mean? Like, it, over there, you know, in in, uh, in La- uh, San Diego, Los Angeles, as I like to call it, because I never could fucking remember to just call yeah. them the L.A. Chargers. But yes, in, in you know, back you know, in all his time over there, he had the shittiest line protecting him, and that, that's why he had he had a, developed one of the quickest releases. You know what I mean? Also, probably yeah. why he has eight kids. You know what I mean? Because he definitely has one of the quickest releases. But uh, you know, but that's besides the fact. He's gonna be able to five. Oh, he's he's gonna be able to five and seven step drop back behind this line, and you know he has T. Y. Hilton, he has you know Jack Doyle. They got a one two yeah. punch with uh, Marlon Mack and Jonathan Taylor, who I have graded oh. as the highest. Uh, I mean the best running back in this class. Yeah. And they're behind the the number one graded offensive line. You know what I mean? So true, true. Yeah, and he's and he's so consistent with 
But he's just so consistent every year. You know he's going to have a great season. They might not make the playoffs with, like, on the Chargers, but you know he's going to put up great numbers, like, every single game. Yeah, like, like you love him in fantasy. I, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I love but, like, I, so this, I, this could be more of a reality take. You know what I mean? It could yeah. be, like, you know, in reality, they might. And they got a really soft schedule. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're, they're in a fair, they're in a, probably one of the weakest divisions. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, it, it's kind yeah. of crazy. For, you know, old man Rivers, man, he might he might do his thing this year. Bounce yeah. back. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I just think it's crazy they moved on past Brissett so fast. Like, they definitely had a shot last season to make the playoffs, and they didn't, they just missed it. Yeah. And then they moved him to bring in Rivers. Like, uh, well, I don't know. Here's the thing, too, is like Rivers definitely, even though he he probably could have had a uh, you know a, an Olympic career as a shock putter because the way he fucking <laughs> throws the goddamn ball, but still <laughs> he's still a better passer than a Jacoby Brissett. You know what I mean? And like, look, it's even though T.Y. Hilton was was dealing with a hamstring most of the season last year, even when he was healthy, Jacoby Brissett couldn't get him the ball. And like, I mean, Philip yeah. Rivers. If you look at Mike Williams last year, Mike Williams led the league in like average depth of target, like at like 22 yards of target. Yeah. You know, you know, and bro, T.Y. Hilton, he's he's only like four years removed from being the you know leading the league in in a in a receiving yards. Yeah. Like. So that's true. You know what I mean? And this is you know if he could stay healthy, but and you know and also another thing here's why they went to Philip Rivers so quick over Brissett. Yep. Yep. This is one of the reasons why is because Frank Reich. The, the head coach over there, you know, he's an offensive-minded guy. He spent time with Phillip Rivers and the Chargers before, so this is, you know, it's, even though it might have been a, a good time ago, he's still familiar with the system, so he'll be able to walk in day one. You know what I mean? True. Uh, it's kind of, Honestly, I think Phillip Rivers is completely overlooked this year, too, just because, like, he didn't really want to be in the Chargers last year. Like, you can tell, like, you know, like, he obviously wanted to win, but you could tell that they were going to part ways after that season. And, and, and that 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 uh, organization was such, like, a cancer, almost. Like, it was just such yeah. a cancer. And they needed to make a change. And they, everyone knew it. Everyone knew Rivers was out. I think he's going to go into this year proving himself. He has great weapons. He has a great defense, great offensive line. And he I got all we these kids to feed. He has, he has like, exactly. I got to feed the kids. I gotta get some money. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, he's got too many kids. kids. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's gotta put up numbers. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll go on to move on to the next uh, segment. And uh, you know, this one is uh, this one could be a reality or fantasy take. But who do you think in free agency that landed in a brand new spot that you think can make an immediate impact, huge impact? You know, just be a game changer for the new team that they landed on. Well, you know, right. we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll keep it in order. Go ahead, Joe. All right. So here's what I'm going to say is obviously it's going to be Sanders. <laughs> I love it. Keep, no, no. Keep wearing the Homer hat. I like this. Just I'm going to say Sanders. Stay consistent. I'm going to say Sanders. I'm going to say Sanders. And here's a couple reasons why. Right. Hey, listen, real quick, real quick. I am, an, I am a diehard 49ers fan. I will miss him. I, I think Sam had an insane year in the 49ers last year. I even know how they like were able and to, coming like, off that Achilles too. Like, we, like yeah, he's fucking uh, Wolverine over here. Yeah, and, 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 and like everyone doesn't really realize that like the Saints haven't had a second round receiver like a number two ever since Nick Cooks was in exact ever with the Saints. Yeah, yeah, exact. Pretty much ever. Like you, you can argue. When Brandon Cooks was like in the Saints, and Michael Thomas was the number two when Michael Thomas was coming yeah, out of his yeah, rookie Mike, year. Michael, yeah, his rookie year, I was about to say, yeah. So, I mean, you could argue that, but I don't even count that because Michael Thomas was, like played, like I think it was, like, it, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it was, like, 11 games. He didn't play all 16. Was yeah, he ended up getting, like, so, an ankle, I remember. If I remember yeah, correctly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, like people don't actually understand, like, the deep threat that he will be for the like, – He's going to open up so many doors to this team. And, you know, I'm going to go with him, but I, I'm also going to give you another guy. I'm, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to say, that I very mentioned him. I'm going to say Melvin Gordon too. I think he's going to be, I think he's going to be insane. I like that because, you know, cause Pat Shermer, that system needs a dual threat running back. I mean, I'm not knocking Philip Lindsay, like I said earlier, but he's just not the guy. Philip Lindsay's a cool story. He's from, he's a hometown kid in Denver. Yeah. But step aside. <laughs> Step yeah, aside. Uh, you're, out. you're done. I'm, I'm sick of you. I'm sick of you. I'm sick of seeing you on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what you got, Drew? Yeah, I, I, I like, uh, I like Todd Gurley this year. I think he's a big, like, like, 
so much better than Devontae Freeman last year. I think he's going to run the ball a lot. I think they're going to hand him off the ball a lot because they know that he can do more than Devontae Freeman had done for them. So they finally have that guy that can run the ball like good distances for the team. And it's going to be better for Matt Ryan not having to pass the ball at his like age right now. Yeah, I'm and like, you know, I could argue it and say, well, you know, dirt cutter. And if you look back on his on his history, who in the fuck running back is notable? But you could say he's never had the caliber of running back like a Todd Gurley. So I tend to agree with you. You know what I mean? Like, yes. And you got Julio Jones. You got oh, yeah. Calvin Ridley, Hayden Hurst Helmsley. You know what I'm saying? You got all these. My bad. That's my nickname for for Hayden Hurst. I call him Hayden Hurst Helmsley. You, know what <laughs> you got you got all these you got all these weapons that are gonna take the top off. He's gonna see six man boxes religiously, and yeah. they have no quarrels with him. This one year, basically a rental. They could run his ass into the dirt. You know what yep. I mean? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, I got one. This one's. Not a skill. This is not a skill guy, but this guy will help everything. And I'm going with Jack Conklin. Jack Conklin, he left. He he was the, he was the right tackle from the Tennessee Titans. Now he landed there in Cleveland. Cleveland was a team. They were 19th in rushing attempts last year, and 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 they had the second leading rusher with Nick Chubb. And now you bring over Kevin Stefanski, who's who was the offensive coordinator with the Vikings last season. You know, and we've seen what they did with Dalvin Cook. But they, they run that zone run scheme. And the zone run scheme, you know, that comes from the Shanahan's. I mean, and, and it makes sense that Kevin Stefanski runs that type of scheme because he's yep. he was mentored by Gary Kubiak, who, who essentially learned from Mike Shanahan. You know what I mean? You know, Daddy Shanahan. So now this zone run scheme is over there in Cleveland, and you need some athletic linemen. And Jack Conklin, if you remember, when he was with Tennessee – Busting that second level open for Derrick Henry all the time. So I think Jack Conklin landing over there in Cleveland is not only going to help the run game, but he's going to help protect Baker Mayfield because Baker Mayfield, his footwork was like he was on fire. Pressure was coming through. You know, now And then they even drafted Jedrick Wills, the uh, left tackle. So now you got yep. you just all of a sudden bolstered this line. And Jack Conklin's going to be the anchor on that line. I, give me some Jack Conklin. He's going to help all the pieces that we all, like we, the OBJs of the world. You know, OBJ had 130 targets last year. Did shit with it because Baker Mayfield. Oh, Baker Don't Mayfield, even start with OBJ. Bro, he was, but see, it was Baker Mayfield being pressured in the pocket. Because if you remember yeah. Baker Mayfield's rookie year, he was one of the more accurate deep ball throwers as a rookie. Then they lost some pieces to retirement and free agency, and their line was so trash in his sophomore outing. So now here he is in his sophomore year. His footwork is like he's on fire, bro. Like it's it was it was like laughable. And now and, and you still were able to have Nick Chubb rip off fourteen hundred yards. You know what I'm saying? So, bro, it's it Jack Conklin is gonna change the game. And if it doesn't work, it's safe to say the Cleveland Browns are just all the way the fuck cursed. You know what I mean? Just it don't matter what they do. If this doesn't work out this year, they're just cursed for real, for real. Oh, 100%. They have so much talent. If they can't get it done this year, it's it's at the end. Yeah. Okay, so let's so now we're going to go ahead and this one's a this one's a, a crazy segment right here because of the type of off season we had. And and also before we get to this segment, I do want to say everybody be safe out there, wear your masks. You know what I mean? And because at first I'm a human being first. I want everybody to be safe. We, we got to beat this COVID-19 shit. And then selfishly, as a fantasy analyst, we need to get our football back. So we, we need everybody yeah. to, you know what I mean, to you know just try to abide by the crazy rules that keep changing. But in this case, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, just, just wear everybody wear your mask and shit like that. But so now the reason I bring up COVID is because we haven't had the type of offseason that we're used to. Rookies, oh, yeah. rookies are going to be starting off slow, in my opinion. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like. You know, especially the skill position guys, like you know what I mean, like because like a, like for example, if you're a rookie receiver, normally you don't even get a full complement of snaps till like after the first quarter of the year. You might not even yep. be in the rotation. I mean, you know, because you know, rookie, just how it is for rookie receivers. Rookie running backs they tend to get they tend to get acclimated faster. But I mean, so Joe, what rookie do you think? 
it's gonna you know where he got drafted to what will happen you know maybe not an immediate but uh, so i won't use that word but let's say a huge impact this year so the obvious one that you know screams at everyone is gonna be cd lamb mm, um, i like that but, yeah i mean that's the obvious one honestly like c lamb is gonna be so good for that offense Dak prescott can start airing it out Dak prescott alone has to prove himself right that he's worth his money so I think with the addition of C. Lamb, like it's going to be huge for that offense. It's going to like really like boost them and be able to actually make the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So I think he's going to be a really great deep threat. I think he's going to be huge fantasy. Uh, honestly, I would say I don't know with ADP. Look, he's, he, he, has ADP? A, he has a tenth round ADP. Nine, unless you're with Cowboy fans in your leagues, he's going to get pulled up in the eighth, ninth round. But yeah, he, he's usually steady around a 10th round ADP. Super in a super flex that's a single QB league. In a super flex league, he's you know, he's, he falls to like the 11th, you know what I mean? But but I'm saying like I I it, listen, this is going to be crazy right here. This is a crazy Bogart take right here cuz I agree, I like the CD Lamb call. You got Mike McCarthy there. He's going to run three wide receiver sets religiously. You know what I mean? CD Lamb is going to be that slot guy. CD Lamb is gonna be used like Devontae Adams was when he when he was with Jordy Nelson and Randall Cobb. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, like, he he so here's my crazy, here's my crazy uh take. He his skill set reminds me of Michael Thomas, bro. Okay. <laughs> his, Thomas skill, so his skill set. You can move him all around the field. He's a contested catching motherfucker. Like, bro, you throw it in his radius, he got it. You know what I mean? Talking about Michael Thomas? Hold on a second. Is Mike, do you think Michael Thomas is the best wide receiver in the NFL? Yes. Yeah! <laughs> All right. Come on. I love it. You know what I call Michael Thomas? What? My nickname for him? I call him Frankenstein. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because have you seen the, the, the length of his head? He has a tall head. He looks like oh, Frankenstein. Okay. <laughs> Oh my God! And oh, yeah. do you know what Frankenstein is? Frankenstein is like you know he has he has body parts from different different you know humans. So he has like he has like you know the the, the arms the arms of like Ke- uh, you know Keyshawn Johnson. He has like you know the legs of like uh, you know uh, Calvin Johnson, and you know what I mean. He's just all these great receivers put into one. You know what I mean? Yep, 100%. I, uh, I love I loved that reference. To be honest with you, I, you know, I, as I as you know, yes. As your, oh, I, no, you I, don't I, say. You're a Saints fan. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm right with you, man. You know, he's the best receiver in the NFL, and it just sucks because people like hate him for no reason. Like this man is double covered. He has insane stats all the time, just because his like primary route is slant, because that's what his like. He can still go deep. Like, he still has plenty of deep reception yards. He still has plenty of, like, it's just insane. And everyone, like, argues, he's like, a, oh, you know. He's a well-rounded receiver and not just well-rounded. At, in every aspect of the game, in every route, he can run the full route tree. He's a contested catching motherfucker. Great hands. And knows, and, like, the, the rapport he has with Drew Brees also also folded over into uh, I mean, rolled over into when when Teddy Bridgewater was there. It didn't matter. Like he's he's full, exactly. he's foolproof, dude. That's why he's yeah. paid, that's why he's the highest paid. That's why he broke the records last season. And I think I, I do want to say I think he's like Keyshawn Johnson's uh, nephew, or so like he grew up. Yeah, he grew up like you know being like you know being mentored by one of the best. Also, you know I mean? one of the yeah. most underrated, I should say. Actually, yeah. Keyshawn Johnson, he was he was a Super Bowl oh. winning quarterback. I mean, a uh, uh, receiver. So, yeah, okay. yeah. I I like DeAndre Swift. I didn't said his name earlier, but I think the Lions are a big underdog team this year. I think they're gonna have a big bounce back year. They got a lot of pieces on defense, and that was a really big problem for them last year. And like Marvin Jones, like I think it's Marvin Jones. Just so yeah, bad, Marvin right? Jones Jr. Jr. Yeah. Jr. Yeah, he's good. And Galladay, you got, like, th- you're going to be thinking that they're going to pass and Swift over there. Like, they already got a good running back over there, too. So he's going to be getting a lot of these touches, like, when people aren't expecting it. I think I think the one thing that we need to look at with the Lions is that Derek Bevel, the offensive coordinator, he's had guys like, you know, Adrian Peterson. He's had guys yeah. like, you know, Marshawn Lynch. Like, he loves to feed a running back. And, you know, Adrian Peterson wasn't a pass-catching back by any means, but Marshawn Lynch was. And on Johnson, 
you know, that's why I was so big on Carrion Johnson for the last couple of years. But he, his injury history goes all the way back to college. There's a reason they spent the high draft capital on DeAndre Swift. They're like, mm-hmm. step aside, Carrion Johnson. They told him to carry on. You know what I mean? They're like, and like, you know, you know, he is a rookie, but he is a running back. So he could get acclimated pretty fast. You know what I mean? So I like that one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to go with my man. I'm going to go with Joe Burrow. Oh, yeah. All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because he, he is, he is a rookie that's going to get 100% of his, his position snaps. It's not like he's yeah. going to come in and be like, all right, go ahead. Uh, you know, uh, uh whoever the fuck, uh, that, that, the backup is, I can't even remember his name. Um, damn, what was his name? Either way, because uh, yeah, he yeah. was a, he was a rookie last year. But either way, Joe Burrow, man, like he has a ton of weapons. I mean, if AJ Green yeah. can stay healthy, he's a, he's 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 always you know t- he always threatens the top five uh, at the position. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, you, you have Tyler Boyd, you know, great slot guy. Yeah, my man yeah. Joe Mixon, who's one of my favorite running backs oh. in the game. John Ross. John Ross, true burner. Yeah. And then you have you know the head coach. Here's here's what's crazy too is the head coach Zach Taylor, he was the offensive coordinator back in um he was the offensive coordinator back in 2018 with the Rams yeah. he was with the Rams, and that was when you know Jared Goff was was crazy, you know what I mean <laughs> like you know what I'm saying like and then and then you you know you have you you couple that with the fact that Joe Burrow coming out of college. I think he I think he had like a hundred and forty passer rating, which is fucking yeah. ridiculous under pressure. Yeah. So when there was pressure coming, he had a hundred and forty passer rating. I might be I've had like three beers so far, so I might be a little <laughs> overzealous. You know what I mean? And, but but I'm but I, if, if I remember correctly, those numbers are you know the, the, I'm in the ballpark. And and that stat is gonna be something that, that he's gonna need because that line isn't the greatest. There's going to be pressure coming. And, if, if, bro, if that stat rolls over from college into the NFL, Joe Burrow is going to be dangerous. And and I love this, too, because it is a bad defense. He's going to be put in a lot of bad spots. You know what I mean? I think yeah. Joe, Joe Burrow is going to be – they might even be a top a, t- a top 12 offense but be a bottom yeah. a bottom of the barrel team as a whole. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, me and, Matt, yeah, me and Joe talk about Joe, Bur- Joe Burrow a lot. And we, we, we talked about how just – his offense around him last year at LSU was just so good. Yeah, and we just we just think it's gonna like the change from that like just the atmosphere there, and then coming to Cincinnati. I think it just might be tough in his first year. They broke the record for the most first round draft picks from LSU. Like, yeah. like, like the, almost their entire offense got drafted to the NFL. Like, that's yeah. unheard of. That's unheard of. I mean, it, so, it, like, I mean, it happens when you have a guy like you know an an offensive minded guru like Joe Brady. You know what I mean? And you have all these weapons, and he literally throws sixty touchdowns. Like you know that all those guys that got drafted from LSU, they they need to send, they need to make sure they're sending Christmas cards to Joe Burrow because he made yeah. sure he made sure they all ate. Yeah, <laughs> true, man. You know it was fun to watch them last year, but I don't, I can't say the same about the Bengals this year. Yeah, well, I mean to preference what I'm saying, I didn't say he was gonna. You know, take him to the playoffs by any means. He's just gonna make. If you look at the way they looked last year, he's definitely gonna improve that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but we're, we're we're big Andy Dalton supporters. Oh, right? we're huge Andy yeah. Dalton fans. Well, you know what? Shout out to the Red Rifle, friend of the show. You know what I mean? Okay, so now for this for this last segment, right? For this last segment, we're gonna, we're gonna go through each division, and we're just gonna rapid fire off. You know who we think will take the division down, and uh, and why? You know what I mean? NFC so. South Saints, boom, next. <laughs> <laughs> and and pray tell. So tell me why. <laughs> Don't answer that. You, we know why. Oh, I love it. Okay, I well, since, no, since we're there, since we're there, I will say yes. I think the Saints take this one down. I mean, yes, Tom Brady's there. You know what I mean? It is. It Tom is going to be who? Tom Brady who? I'm, I'm just saying, like. It is Tom Brady there, but man, this is the team that has full continuity. You know what I mean? Like a lot of those teams, yeah. like you know, I mean, yeah, maybe you. I guess you could say the the Falcons have you know, com, you know, they're probably coming back improved. You know what I mean? Like they're gonna have pieces on their line back. They're gonna have pieces on their on their their, their secondary back. They got a better uh, upgrade at running back. They got a they got a 
they, they maybe not necessarily got to upgrade at tight end, but he definitely is more athletic than Austin Hooper. Maybe Hayden Hurst doesn't have as great hands as Austin Hooper, but bro, hands down, when you every team in that division step aside, it, it's the Saints, it's it's who that nation's division. Yeah, dude, it's still our division, and, and you know it's gonna be probably the most competitive division you'll see in a while. It's gonna be entertaining. And- it's, I, 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 so feel it's, good. I feel it's going to be like watching the NFC West last last year. Like how the NFC West was yeah, just yeah. so crazy. Yeah. Like, yo, that's, yeah. that, 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 that NFC South is going to be bananas. Okay. It's going to be so good to watch. What, what you got in this division, Drew? Yeah, I, I, I like the Saints, too. I mean, I mean, the Buccaneers are just so good. But Tom Brady's first year back, like, on a different team, I think, I don't know, he's going to have to prove himself. He needs to prove that he is the guy and not Bill Belichick. But I still think the Saints got it this year with the addition of Emmanuel Sanders. I think that puts him over the edge. You know what? When you said um, uh, Bill Belichick, I, I also want my honorable mention real quick uh, for a bounce back candidate is definitely Cam Newton, but I had Phillip Rivers above yeah. him. Yeah. That's what we, yeah, I was thinking that's yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but so, okay, so now let's go to the AFC South. We'll bounce from conference to, uh, from conference, to conference. So let's go to AFC South. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. Who, who do you think takes down his division? I, I'm gonna pop this one up. It's hard to not say the Texans. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, but no, 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 hold on, hold on. But I'm gonna go with the Tennessee Titans. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I I I don't know. I like. I think Tannehill is gonna have a tough year this year because they're gonna like everyone knows what Tannehill is gonna do. Well, he got the money too, though. I hate I hate it when a guy's not hungry anymore. Cause he got the hundred M's now, you know what I mean? Like last year yeah. when, when you know he had to fight for a job, fight to keep a job and earn a paycheck, he got it. You know, they they did lose Jack Conklin, but I'm just saying like they're the most complete team. They they got yeah. a, they got a great defense. They got a, not a great, but they got a top twelve defense. You know what I mean? Especially compared to yeah. the rest of the teams in the division. But but no, but go ahead. Go, tell me tell me more about Tano. Yeah, I just yeah, I just don't know. I. I if he gets pressured a lot, he throws the ball away a ton. So you, all you need to do is pressure him at in the pocket, and he'll just throw the ball away. I think yeah, and I, I wonder if he's going to use his wheels anymore now that he's paid. He might yeah. be a little scared, or maybe they, maybe even they might not even call, uh, you know, a, a, a QB a QB draws or anything like that because yeah. he's paid now, and they might need to put some bubble wrap on his ass. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. But he does have a bunch of weapons that you can just put the ball in their yeah. hands, like you know, he does he got, have so many. Yeah, like AJ Brown, you hit off AJ Brown with like oh, a, yeah. a six yard pass, and he, bro, he's a tank. He's, and you could do the same thing with Derrick Henry. He's not really a, he's not a route runner by any means. He's really just a slant guy. But you give him a slant, bro, and he got them thirty three inch arms, which just hit him with the vicious ass, the vicious goddamn stiff arms we've ever seen in a while. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, okay. What what you got in this division, Drew? Yeah, I, I I'm gonna go with the Colts, same as Joe. I think. I don't know. I think the Texans just. I think their chemistry with the team this year with Bill O'Brien. I think there's a lot of heat there back and forth between the players and him getting rid of. Yeah, I think Hawkins. Bob's an idiot. Yeah, yeah, he's such an idiot. Yeah, but yeah, and then the Titans. I think the Titans. I think Titans and Colts are going to be close this season. But I, like we were saying earlier, I like Philip Rivers over there. He has a lot of weapons. Yeah, I, I will say though, people are not even sniffing the Colts. Like no yeah. one's oh, looking at oh. them. Like. It's so yep. crazy. And, like, you know, even with the – remember the type of offseason I said we had? Phillip Rivers knows this system. He's going to be able to walk in this motherfucker day one. You know what I mean? And be effective. So, you know what? I might have to go ahead and, and get unanimous with you guys. I'm going to go and switch mine to the Colts. Let's go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's go. It's, it's my uh, show. I can do that, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, now let's, let's go um, – let's go polar opposite. Let's go – let's shoot to the north. Right, and we'll start off with the uh, we'll go with the NFC North, and I, I'll, sh- I'll I'll set this one off. This one, this one, uh, then this one was really tough. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because like it's it's kind of an ugly division if you think about it. But yeah, it's so ugly. Like, but see, here's the thing, right? Damn, Ugh, I'm gonna beat myself for saying this. I want to say the Bears, man, because the Bears are my dark horse. Ow! <laughs> Man, the, the Bears defense is still fucking phenomenal. They they lost a couple pieces on in their front set. They, they you know they uh, uh, what's his name um, 
uh, Akeem Hicks went down, Danny Trevathan went down, and then all of a sudden you could run the ball on them. The year before that, they never gave up no 100-yard ga- game to a running back, right? And then and then you got, obviously, a change. You got a new coordinator, John Filippo. John Filippo, he, he spent time with Nick Foles in Jacksonville and in, in, in Philadelphia. So I really think it's going to be Nick Foles. And Nick Foles, he also has one of those intangibles that I was talking. Remember, I was talking about yep. how Matt Ryan has an intangible. Yeah, Nick Foles, his intangible is that white Jesus loves him. This guy, <laughs> anywhere he goes, he just prays and he gets an opportunity. Yeah, and he just does it and he makes it happen. And there's a wide open opportunity for him to get this job in a division where, I mean, cause I honestly, if the Vikings defense wasn't so shitty last year, and you know, yeah. I would say the Vikings, but then, bro, like the most continuity coming back is the Bears. Like, yeah, that's true. And everyone looks past Nick Foles because of his injury last season. But it's like you you have to remember he was in the Super Bowl like three years ago. Yeah, he's a, that type of quarterback still. Like he, he was like, one one year removed. And he beat just, a like, Bill Belichick defense and spanked him. He didn't just beat him; he spanked yeah. him like. Yeah. And Nick Foles, he tends to do this. He tends to have these big blow-up games. But then he has these, like, games where you're like, what in the fuck? But still, man, I mean, even if it is Trubisky, like, the, the way they're, the, you know, because Trubisky is another one of those guys, extreme flashes, like, yeah. big yeah, games yeah. and really, really shit games. More shit yeah. games than the big ones. But, bro, like, like you remember last year, Trubisky, Thursday nighter against the Cowboys? Yeah, Tor- f- what is it? Three, three touchdowns or three passing touchdowns. He ran one in. He had like eighty yards on the ground. Yeah. He had like a like a hundred and ten passer rating. Like he can do yeah. things. I mean, he could do things, but like you know, he just I don't know, man. It, maybe he's just. I think you know, maybe it's his, it, it's him coming out of college with only thirteen starts and kind of just getting thrusted into the NFL. But either yeah. way, Nick Foles. If not, Nick Foles is still one of the greatest backups in the game. And I yeah. think they're a shoe in for. I mean, if Nick Foles is not the starter, he's you know arguably the greatest backup in the game right now because he's the only Super Bowl yeah. MVP backup that we, uh, yeah. to date, right? But I but was, yeah, I, yeah. I think he beat out Trubisky. I think, yeah, I think, I think Trubisky might start the season. I I don't know, but I I don't think he's gonna be the start of that for the whole season. Yeah. Okay. Well, what you got, Joe? Ah, I want to go. I want to go Packers. I want to go Packers. I don't like the Vikings, obviously. For for you know, I'm the Saints fan. I can never say Vikings. Oh shit, go. that's right. <laughs> I'm gonna go Packers. I'm gonna go Aaron Rodgers has an insane year. I do not think they will make it far in the playoffs. I think they're a very weak team overall. But I think Aaron Rodgers goes off because he wants to prove himself. Like it, love it. I I, I didn't want to. I wanted to. I wanted to be kind of contrarian in that sense, but. Yeah, that's that's why I didn't go with the Packers, but you know what I'm saying. But and I, I just I'm still a, I'm a believer a believer in defense wins. You know, just games in general. I don't want to say championships. I don't want to go and say the goddamn Bears are going to win a championship now. But I yeah. yeah. But okay, go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, what you got, a, Andrew? Yeah, they do have a great defense. Yeah, I'm going to go with the Packers too. I, I I don't I think the Vikings going to drop off a lot. I think the Bears might take that second spot with the loss of Diggs and their defense kind of just kind, kind of falling of off. Shambles right now. I feel yeah. like. And they dread, and it, you know, Mike Zimmer. He is a defense a uh, Zimmerman. He is a, a defensive minded guy. Yeah. Is it Zimmer or Zimmerman? I'm, see, because I'm on my fourth beer now. Uh, he, either way, yeah. Coach Z. How about that? He. Yeah. Yeah, he's a defensive minded guy. You know, they got rid of both their top corners because they they weren't performing like top corners. You know, with uh, Xavier Rhodes and uh, Trey Lanes. You know, they're yeah. gone. They they drafted two rookies. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I don't see these rookies making an immediate impact, but their front no, seven yeah. is still f- phenomenal. But, yeah, and one thing, they did lead the league last year, Minnesota. They led the league in most touchdown receptions given up for uh, 20 yards uh, or more. And that's a yeah. bad, That's not a good stat. You know what I mean? That's no. <laughs> yeah, and losing all those guys, like, that's it's just going to go up and up. Yeah. Okay, so now let's go and flip to the AFC North. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, obviously, just Ravens and move on. Yep, yeah. Ravens move on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's now let's let's go ahead and let's go hang a right. We're gonna go hang a right. Go to the the, the NFC East because we might. This one could be. We could have a little bit of debate on this one. I mean, obviously, yeah. I I'd assume Joe, you, you like I, the Cowboys here. 
I'm gonna go. Yeah, I'm gonna go Cowboys here for multiple reasons. I'm gonna say because I, I it's between the Eagles and the Cowboys, but I yeah. think the Cowboys had an insane draft. I think McCarthy's gonna help their offense tremendously. And I think Prescott's going to need to prove himself that he's worth his money with C.D. Lamb and Amari Cooper. So I think they're going to be really solid. You know what? I'm going to shock the world and save the Redskins. Nah, just playing. Just playing. I'm going with the Eagles. You, wait, hold on. Did you say, did you say the Redskins? No, I was, I was fucking around. <laughs> yeah, the Washington. The, the what? The what? Yeah. The Washington uh, to be named. You know what I mean? Yeah, the Washington to be named. The, the Washington TB, T, TBNs. You know what I mean? But I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm going with uh, the Eagles. I just think like you know, even though it's, even though Mike yeah. McCar- Mike McCarthy is a uh, you know he's a Super Bowl winning coach and et cetera, you know a lot of winning seasons. He couldn't do it with Aaron Rodgers for years. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like and like, I mean the best thing that the Cowboys got going for them right now is the fact that Kellen Moore is coming back because Kellen Moore's yeah. shown that yo Dak Prescott is a, is the is the real deal. You know what I mean? Like yeah. before that when it was Jason Garrett. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, calling all the plays, like you know, what I mean, it was vanilla as fuck, hella predictable. Yep. But now you yes. know. But I, but I, but but I mean, man, Doug Peterson, man, he knows how to win consistently, and he knows how to adapt when they lose pieces. And I'm still, look, I still believe in Carson Wentz. You know what I mean? Carson Wentz is a, uh, he's just riddled with injuries, unfortunately. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. I, I'm also gonna say the Cowboys, but. My all my alternate for that division, I like I like the Giants. I like Woo! I like I like I like Danny Dimes this year. I think he's gonna I, have a, listen. First, I do too. I just think he's gonna have a rough go the first like quarter of the year. If you look at the schedule, it's yeah. whoa like he's. But after that, it's kind of smooth sailing. You know yeah, what? I like that. Their line so much better too though this year. Get, giving Dimes more time in the pocket, being able to throw to all these guys. You got Golden Tate out there. Yeah. Damn, what? He flashed a ton, bro. Yeah. Da- Danny Dimes? Danny fucking okay. Dimes, bro. He, he flashed I... a ton. And, oh, like, yeah. I mean, you know, the only thing that sucks is that he, you know, his his weapons, they're all going to get opportunity to get, you know, to get single coverage because you have someone like Saquon Barkley there. Right? So you're going to have... Those eight years old, though. That's the only problem. But, but still, though, he's, he's, a, he's one of the best friends... To a to a young quarterback because he's yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a possession yeah. guy and then you got yeah and then you got Evan Ingram who um you know who's probably gonna get a ton of work as long as he can stay healthy you know yeah. so you got Sterling Shepard who's actually dope but like you know he, no same wonder. thing with him like he's a concussion away from fucking retirement for real <laughs> you know what I mean like but like yo if this team can stay healthy the one thing I do worry about and this is not a this is a fantasy take is that like. They're gonna run a slower pace offense because that's Jason Garrett's style. You know what I mean? Yeah. But like, yo, if they could, if when they were going up tempo last season, like that's when Danny Dimes shines, bro. Like, yeah, yeah, dude. I like that. I like that call a lot, actually. But yeah, the, I like. The, I just don't know. You know what's crazy? I don't know too much about Joe Judge. I just know that. I just know that he's from the Belichick, like you know, coaching family tree. But but yeah, okay. Let, let's move on. Let's go to the AFC East. I mean, listen, I know there's a lot of hype on the Buffalo Bills, but I'm, with Cam Newton there, I'm just saying the Patriots, and I, I dropped the mic. Yeah, same with me. I think it's going to be close between them and the Bills, but I think it's going to be a one or two win difference. Boo, boo, boo. I the, go Bills, 100%. This is, the Bills, this is the Bills division to lose. No question. Give me an effing break. Give me an effing break. <laughs> no, it's okay. We're yeah. not a P- we're not a PG show. You could you could drop the full F bomb. A fucking yeah. Break. There you go, Joe. <laughs> I'm sick of it. I'm sick of hearing the Cam Newton hype. This guy, who, who knows who you're getting? Like, that's the problem. I, okay, I, I want to say I want to say two names: Josh McDaniels, Tim Tebow. Josh. Tim Tebow. Tim yeah. Tebow. Do you remember Josh McDaniels as the head coach of the Broncos? Who did he have? He had Damn. Tim Tebow, and he got and Tim Tebow is essentially a fullback that was throwing the ball. Tim Tebow is not a good passer. Cam Newton is. So you guys want to hear something though? I'm telling you, something? there's a mobile playbook. There's a mobile playbook in New England that they were never be able to utilize because it was Tom a mobile Brady. Playbook? They gotta find it in the ocean. Oh, what are you talking about? Here's the here's the issue that I'm having. Right? Here's okay. McDaniel's came out two months ago and said, "Hey, I fucking hate 
Camden. I think he is the epitome of my offense. He, he was, direct quote was, he is not fit for the offense, but I guarantee you it was like he was fucking swearing at him. So I was like, I was literally like, okay, that's it. You know, the rumors are gone. If McDaniels doesn't, if, if McDaniels doesn't want want Newton, then that's it. But now, now Newton comes in, and it's like, you know, what's actually going to happen? I, I, who knows? So I don't know actually who what Newton you're getting. He hasn't played in a year. Here's a stat for you. He's 0-8 in his last eight starts. That's a stat for you. He lo- they lost a ton of missing pieces. Like, the, the Bills are the best team in that division. The Bills. Top three team in the AFC. I'd say they're a top five. Because I can name, you know what I'm saying? I'd say in the AFC, the Chiefs are number one. Ravens. And I still gotta put the Patriots, and I will still put, I will still put the Texans above them. Oh! Listen, do you remember? <laughs> listen, Josh, Josh Allen. I love Josh Allen. I actually call him the White Cam Newton. You know what I'm saying? I love Josh Allen. And the playmakers know. All you know, the, my audience, they know. I love Josh Allen, but it's a horrendous schedule. And Josh Allen, I happen to believe he's an idiot. I happen to believe he's not smart, like, in reality. Like, he's the guy who got stuck in a revolving door. You know what I mean? Like, no, Allen is not an idiot. He's he, a good player. He, no, no, he's a great player. But I'm saying, like, in real life, like, he's the epitome of dumb jock. You know what I mean? <laughs> Matter of fact, come on. Do you remember that Texans, Texans-Bills Texans playoff game? When if there was still, like, you know, plenty of time on the clock and he's running with the ball, he laterals it? Yeah, I mean, I, that Come was, on. yeah, so. He lateraled I mean, the ball. Yes, definitely, no question, that was really dumb, and, and you know, and, and he just needs time, and then, you know, I think he was really uh, pressured and, and flustered in that game. And, and they, that's, you know, that, and they were a bottom-of-the-barrel defense, the, the goddamn uh, uh, Texans. <laughs> yeah. All right, I, you know, we, we got mixed opinions. I can talk yeah, about yeah, no, 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 but see, but this is why, this is why I appreciate your guys' content, because, I've seen you guys have these similar arguments between the four of you guys, which is great. Like, you know I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. We have a lot of arguments. Yeah, man, and you know what, too? Like, listen, this, this, this will def. And I, I do want to say, you know, as this is your guys' premiere on my show, I, you know, I hope this opens the door for you guys, and you guys are always more than welcome to come back. And we could, we, you know, while the season goes on, we could. I would I would appreciate you shitting on me if I'm wrong about the bills. <laughs> yeah, we gotta have I was, you on our show. We gotta have you on our show, man. Bro, man, I'm man. Anytime, bro. Anytime. I I would love to. And here's the thing about Josh Allen and the Bills. I had them like I won money on them last year, putting money on them going to the playoffs. You know what I mean? Because not only were the odds there, but bro, it was just their defense incredible. You know what I mean? Yep. You know, yep. their secondary, inc- incredible. Their, their front seven, incredible. Defensive-minded guy. As a matter of fact, Steve, uh, uh, Steve uh, Sean McDermott, he came from Carolina. And, like, you know, and obviously he was there with Cam Newton. So it's, it's no coincidence that he was like, listen, when we draft our quarterback, I want a dual-threat guy. I love yep. Josh Allen. Just the, the type of – his schedule is crazy. That's why I don't really – you know, and, and, and I'm just going to go with the showing and improved – you know, New England Patriots. I hate, I hate to say it, but the evil empire is not going anywhere for a while. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, well, as long as Belichick's there, so you know, we'll see what happens yeah. there. And I happen to have a theory that you know, because I am a big Star Wars fan, that I, I believe that you know, he's 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 found a way to clone himself, so he's going to be here for a long time. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead. Oh, and actually, was, uh, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Drew, uh, uh, Andrew did say the Patriots. Okay, so yeah, he's that. Let's go ahead. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Uh, it's the last one here. So we got two divisions right here. We're going to the West. I mean, should we just say Chiefs and drop the mic, and then we'll. we'll yeah, di- Chiefs next. No question. Yeah. No, no debate there. Chiefs shaking his head. So. He, he yeah. Has to, yeah. Okay. So let's. So now I am a Niner fan, and even okay. even I, even I am skeptical about this year. Like I think we're we're shooing for one for one of the wild card spots. Yeah. But like. I mean, and I, you know, our first half of the year schedule is phenomenal. Like we might, we might very well go like seven and one, and then then we start running into like, you know, the the Seahawks, the uh, you know, uh, uh, and and the Packers and and the Saints, and you know what I mean, like and, and the Ravens again. Like it's it, it's crazy. Like you know what I mean. Like our second half schedule is going to be rough, and then then you have someone like Russell Wilson and company, who just seem to always just find a way to be in it. You know what I mean, like. But 
I will. Yep. But in true Joe fashion, I'm throwing on the hat. Bang, bang, Niner gang. I think we got this still. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I, I think I think it's Seahawks division for a couple of reasons. I think Sanders' loss is a huge is, is a huge loss. I think Garoppolo is terrible. Uh, I think Mostert's unhappy there. I think it's it's, it's you know Garoppolo it's, had thirty eight. Pa- I mean thirty nine hundred passing yards, thirty touchdowns, <laughs> only ten reception, uh, ten interceptions. I uh, all right, good. That's a good stat. It's not bad, I mean, right? No, trust me. I fell out of my seat when I read this stat. You know, when I was uh, like doing my quarterback rankings, I was like, "Oh my god!" But also because I'm a season ticket holder, and I'm half the time, I'm just I'm just focusing on the fact that we were able to run the ball so crazy. I didn't realize that. And okay, how about this? Here's 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 a Bogart original saying. Last season, I was saying we're winning ugly with handsome Jimmy. You know what I mean? Because. Bro, we won. Like it was so ugly for most for the most part, but we were just our defense would our defense and our run game just pulled us out. So I tend to agree with you. Yes, Jimmy G is not that great, but his numbers were pretty good, right? Considering. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. It's it, it's it's that a Forty Niners division to lose. Um, yeah, I, I can't yeah, I can't I, argue I, with the with the Seahawks thing because I did just say I mean, but the Seahawks yeah. defense is really bad. That's yeah, the it's just the same thing. Yeah, I like the Seahawks too this year. It just it's gonna be a tough division with the 49ers there too. Yeah, I, and then and then you also got you know the everyone's favorite dark horse, the Cardinals. You know what I mean? So yeah. not, not not a big Cardinals guy. I, I don't I don't me know. either. I, don't, I mean, and I'm not just saying that as being biased. Like I love Kyler Murray this year though. I love him, but like, but it's mainly mainly in fantasy because I 540 pass attempts as a rookie, and I think he's gonna have a floor of like 600 pass attempts. Give me him in fantasy and with the rushing, True. with the rushing, like, you know what I mean? He's, and then you give him Nuke Hopkins, fucking Nuke Skywalker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You're right. It's going to be a really tough division and uh, going to be fun to watch. Yeah. But yeah, man, Joe and Andrew host or two of four of the host of the Clown Town Sports Talk Show. Man, I appreciate you guys. This was really fun. Uh, you know yes. what I mean? Have your people call my people. I would love to, to, to come on your guys' show, and uh, I would love to do this again too, man. Like, like I just yes, definitely. I, I you know I'm always reaching out to everybody that I actually enjoy their content. Like I don't just like bring it on anybody. You know what I mean? Like I actually tune into your guys' shit. You know what I mean? Which, yeah, man. I mean, also yeah, too, yeah, because you know like I I you know I I, I want to be familiar too. With, with people's stuff before I bring them on. So, I you know, not only was I already checking you guys out, I just wanted to check you guys out before I actually reached out, too. You know what I mean? So Thanks, with, man. Yeah, man. And, like, so before we close this thing up, go ahead and let them know one more time where they can find you guys on social media and and, uh, uh, and your podcast. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're clowntown.talkshow on Instagram and then uh, clowntown sports on everything else, you know, Apple, Anchor, Spotify, etc., and uh, also YouTube. So definitely check us out. Give us a like and a follow. And uh, thanks a ton. It was great talking to you, man. And uh, can't wait to have you on our podcast. Yeah, man. Anytime, bro. You know, for real, for real. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is one thing. You know, I come from the music industry. And, like, you know, collaborating in the music industry is not the easiest thing to do. But, like, in the podcast industry, it's just so much fun, man. Because, you know, people yes, are just, yes. people just yes. love to cross-promote. And, like, hey, man, I call a spade a spade. You guys are awesome. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it, it was it was a no-brainer for me to reach out. Thanks so much, man. It was great talking to you, and uh, hope all's well, and we'll reach out to you soon. Yeah, man. Y'all yeah. be safe. Y'all take it easy, and, uh, you know, I mean, you know I'll, I'll see you guys in the near future. Yes, sir. Thanks, man. For sure. Peace. Uh-